So last year, my team and I decided, just for the fun of it, to review and audit 1,200, that's 1,200 e-commerce stores and figure out what are the biggest e-commerce SEO issues. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the eight biggest issues that we found with e-commerce stores with SEO specifically. The first issue is not using keyword modifiers. The biggest, number one mistake, is not using keyword modifiers in the title tag. The title tag is what shows in the Google search results above the URL and above the meta description. This is a very key point for SEO. It's a very key optimization point. It's very important that you get your keyword in here. Now, most people have the keyword just by having a category of product about that. For example, if you sell TV cabinets, well, your keyword is probably TV cabinets. However, you can usually find lower competition keywords by adding what we call keyword modifiers that allow you to expand those keywords. For example, if you're an e-commerce store, again, which you probably are, then add the word buy in front of all your collection pages or category pages. It's very, very easy by having buy TV cabinets. That's an additional keyword. And as a result of that, this keyword usually is very, very low competition, or at least much lower competition, and much, much higher buyer intent. So you convert more, and it's easier to rank for. In all cases, it's a win-win. The second mistake is not focusing on CTR in the meta description. Now, let me explain those two things. Number one, CTR is click-through rate. And number two, meta description is the description that shows in the Google search results below the title and below the URL. And the reason this is really, really important because this is your real estate. If you think about it, there's only 10 organic results in the Google search results. And if you're lucky and strategic enough to get yourself into those top 10, especially into the top three, and you're not leveraged in that by treating this as an advertisement for your business, then you're gonna miss out on a lot of traffic, right? For example, even if you're ranking number one and your meta description is really boring, it says we sell TV cabinets online, check out our store, right? It's very, very dry. Whereas your competitor below you mentions things like you have free shipping and next day delivery and buy now, pay later, and just benefits of purchasing from their store versus yours. You may even find that even though you're ranking above them, they may even get more traffic than you because theirs is more compelling to click onto, i.e. they're focusing on C, TR. Now we found that 76% of stores we looked at weren't correctly looking at CTR with the meta descriptions and were just automatically generating some random junk and in some cases not even having a meta description altogether which is even worse. Now my bonus tip for this is to have a template for different categories of products because you don't want to have a custom one every single time when you have thousands, 10,000 products or more, right? So have a template for each category and that allows you to focus on CTR without having to manually modify every single one. But make sure you do this because you'll get more traffic as a result of this and you may even increase your rankings because people choose to click on your website even though you're in position two versus the one that's in number one because their meta description is bad, okay? So make sure you optimize for CTR in your meta description. The third mistake we found was that 55% of websites had a loading time slower than three seconds. This is getting pretty slow at this point. In fact, we even found websites had loading time slower than five seconds. Now, this is a really key point. It's important for SEO, of course, but it's also important for your users. And if your website is really slow, it's gonna lower your conversion and may even lower the traffic because they just click off and go to another website. Now, what do you do to improve this? Well, I do have another video where I kind of introduce the basic of this, but those are, for example, implementing caching, resizing and compressing your images, implementing a CDN, loading less products at a time. For example, if you have 100 products all loading up on your page at one time, well, that's a lot of images, a lot of resources to load. So just things like that that you can implement to speed up your site and of course get better web hosting. But more likely than not, you wanna have an expert take care of this for you if you're not a technical person because it is really important and many sites we found, even bigger brands, weren't correctly optimizing for speed. Mistake number four is not subscribing to my YouTube channel. We can get more free advice on SEO and free training on all things SEO and not clicking the like button so YouTube recommends this video to more people. No, but in all seriousness, here's the actual number four. The fourth biggest mistake with 50% of stores not implementing this is not leveraging product schema. Now, product schema is where you basically 
wrap tags around bits of content on your product pages to explain your product details. For example, if I look at your product page as a human, I can look at this and very quickly see, okay, this is the product name, this is the product price, Here's the stock options, like is it in stock, how many are stocks are on. I can look at this and very easily determine this. However, for a robot, this can be a lot more difficult to kind of determine those key pieces of information. The same thing is if I look at someone's face, I can tell if they're happy or sad, and this can be done by robots, but it's a little bit more technical to kind of figure out how to do that and took a lot longer, right? Well, it's the same idea with schema. And essentially what this is, is you add a little bit of code to your page. This explains, hey, this is the price of the product. Here's how many are in stock. Here's our delivery options and so on. And many times you'll find that if you're searching for something within Google search, you see something like maybe this product has 27 reviews at a 4.3 star rating, right? Or you see that it's in stock or out of stock. And you see some different options explaining details about the product on this specific store. Well, this comes from product schema. It's very important you add this because when it gets added to Google search results, which isn't always, but if it does, it will massively increase the CTR, again, the click-through rate to your website. So make sure you add this, and of course, if you're using something like Shopify, this will be done by default. Mistake number five is not having a description on the category page. We found that almost 42% of stores had this mistake, and it's a really, really big deal, because if you look at it, in most cases, the category pages make more money than any other page on your site when it comes to SEO, and it's really simple to explain why. Maybe someone will search for a specific brand of, say, microphone. So they'll search that they wanna buy a Sennheiser EW100 G3, which is apparently what I'm using right now. However, there's a lot more people that will simply search to buy a, a lapel microphone, right? So by having a category page, you can usually target a lot broader keywords with a lot higher search volume. Now the problem comes in, of course, when you don't have any content on this page because content is important for search. So if you have this category which sells lapel microphones or lavalier microphones and you have no content on this page, well, it can be very, very difficult to rank this page. So the solution to this is very simple. Add some content, right? So at the top, usually you just want to have a small little description, but usually what I'll do is at the bottom of the page, I have a more detailed description explaining this category of products. If it's your own brand, obviously explain what makes your brand unique. If it's other people's products, then explain how exactly you selected the products and things they need to know before making a purchase of this type of thing. So for example, if I'm buying again a microphone and I'm buying a lavalier microphone, I wanna know what exactly is this? Why should I buy this? What are things I should know first? Then internal link them to the other categories of other types of microphones, but just provide some useful information that they may wanna know before they make a purchase. And in short, just add some content, right? Now don't just add junk thing content, but add some content to your categories. It will help you rank better. Mistake number six is having filters and other thin content indexed. We found that just over 39% of stores had this problem. And if you don't know what this is, if you look on any category page or in any e-commerce store, you're usually gonna see some filters and options, right? So select the color and you click say red, select the price under $50, over $50 or whatever, right? These are all filters to narrow down the products that you're looking at. So you can only look at, say, certain prices, certain colors, certain options, or anything like that. And the problem is oftentimes these have been indexed in Google search by default. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. For example, if you sell, I don't know, handbags, maybe you wanna have a page ranking for red handbags or black handbags and so on, because there's a good chance people may actually be searching for that. Again, I don't know anything about handbags. But also, you don't want to do this every single time. And in many cases, there isn't search volume. And when you have every single filter indexed by default, well, that is a lot of thin content. And by thin content, I mean pages being indexed that have no search for them, there's no purpose, and there's no real need for it to be indexed within a search engine. It's not really adding any value to search. So what do you do here? Well, firstly, you wanna double check the keywords. Double check, maybe it actually makes sense to have, again, a red, filter and optimize this for the actual keyword that you're targeting there. However, in many cases you have like filter by price under say $25 and people aren't necessarily searching for that or maybe they are, again, check it. But if they're not, then again, just no index that filter and no index means you add a little tag to it that says, hey, please 
don't index this filter. Please don't add this to your search engine. It's very simple and it'll eliminate a lot of thin content pages. In many cases, we'll see hundreds, if not thousands of pages indexed within your stores that simply don't need to exist. So it's thin content and it's wasting crawl budget and crawl resources by having all this junk content that simply doesn't need to be there. Mistake number seven is very, very similar to mistake number five, and that is not having descriptions on product pages. And to add a bonus step to this while we're at it, it's having duplicate content on product pages. Now we found that 29% of the stores we looked at didn't have a decent description of any kind actually on the product pages, which is absolutely crazy. Now, in some cases, you may not necessarily want to rank your product pages, and that's perfectly acceptable. But if you do intend on ranking a page, then even a product page should have a description of the product that they're looking to purchase. Again, this isn't just for search engines, though it's certainly important there. It's also for users, because if I'm reading your website and I'm looking to purchase a product, and there's no description of what exactly the product is, then I'm less likely to buy it. Now, sure, you should have your technical specifications if it's that, that really explain the product details. We should also describe the product and have a little description, whether that's even just 150 words or so and a really short description, but just have something describing the product. Again, it will convert better for users and it will help you rank the product page. And usually what you want to do is look up the keyword as in the product name to buy the product and see what your competitors are doing. So you may not necessarily need a massive amount of content, but just double check this because your competitors have a lot, then you need a lot also. Okay, so look at what is working and in short, just add descriptions to your product pages. Very, very simple. And the final mistake, mistake number eight, we found that 25% of these stores didn't have keyword optimized URLs. Now a keyword optimized URL is having the keyword that you're looking to target in the URL. For example, if you're selling again TV cabinets, then you should have yourstore.com slash TV cabinets. Right now, if you're using something like Shopify, you have extra things added in there and that's perfectly fine. For example, with Shopify, it'll be yourstore.com slash collections slash TV dash cabinets, okay? And that's perfectly acceptable, but make sure you have that keyword in the URL. Many stores we looked at, they have say the TV cabinets category, but the URL is just a whole mesh of numbers and letters and doesn't make any sense. Now again, this is bad for search engines, of course, because the URL is an important point for optimizing for your keyword, but it's also really bad for users because when you look at the URL, well, it doesn't really make any sense. What are they clicking on, right? So this point is very simple. Include the keyword in the URL. It's really simple. Just make sure that you do it. Now, before we wrap up this video, I have one final bonus tip for you that didn't really come up in the data, but I see this personally work with a lot of e-commerce store owners, and that is not having enough category pages. By not having enough category pages, you're usually massively missing out on the number of keywords that you can target. For example, you have a store that sells pet food and they'll create a category that says, say, pet food. And they're thinking, okay, we have filters for dog food, cat food, and so on. And this can be okay if you index and optimize on those filters. But in many cases, if you use something like Shopify, by default, they no index every single filter and you have no option to turn this off. And that gives you a massive problem because that means you have a page called pet food but you can't actually optimize this for dog food and cat food separately. And even within that, that's even still broad, okay? Even if you just have dog food, that's actually not specific enough. You should have a category for dry dog food and wet dog food and whatever other types of dog food there are, I'm not entirely sure, right? So this issue is very common. I see this on almost every store that I've worked with and consulted for, and it's a really easy fix. Just research keywords and decide which additional categories you can create. Again, dog food isn't enough because dry dry dog food and wet dog food, they're additional keywords that usually rank on a different page. Therefore, you should have additional categories for those keywords. But even beyond that, a really easy one to expand into is having branded categories. For example, if you sell a brand name of dog food, then have a category for that brand name. Now, I can't think of any examples here, so let's use TVs instead. If you're selling TVs, then have a category for Samsung TVs and LG TVs and Panasonic TVs, because people will search for the brand name also. It's an additional keyword that you can expand into and therefore should be an additional category. That is a major, major 
problem I see on e-commerce stores. And by implementing this simple change, you'll be able to massively expand the keywords you're able to target, therefore massively expand the potential for traffic on your store, which again will massively expand the potential revenue from your store. Anyway, so there you have it. That is the eight biggest e-commerce SEO mistakes based on data, not on my own opinion. We actually audited 1,200 stores to collect all this data. So make sure that if you run your e-commerce store that you implement the solutions that I suggested in this video. I also recommend, again, subscribing to my channel because I have more videos just like this on Shopify SEO and all things SEO. If you like this video, please do me a favor, click the like button below so YouTube recommends this to more people. And aside from that, I will see you in my next video video.